I'm still holding on to my optimistic lens. And I think maybe we're just right at that inflection point where I think my own views will change in the next year or two, but I'm not there yet. And here's the reason why. Trying to figure out how GPT is going to impact the world is crazy. So one of the things I thought about was, let's say in general, it can replace a professional, like in the next five years, let's give it some time. In the next five years, it can replace a professional in 80% of professions that are knowledge worker up to three years of experience, right? Well, what does that do to the job market? And what does that do to us as, you know, business owners, right? Because it's our job to constantly be watching the market because it's competitive and it's a jungle out here and you can just get sideswiped out of, out of nowhere. So it's important to be aware of the new technologies coming, right? You don't want yeah. to be the blockbuster. Sitting here today, um, I'm, I'm still holding on to my optimistic lens. And I think maybe we're just right at that inflection point where I think my own views will change in the next year or two, but I'm not there yet. And here's the reason why. As you said, you know, look, I've also seen it, you know, I've been around 25 years plus in tech. Uh, I've seen waves come and go. I've seen, you know, the bubbles burst and all that. But I think all said and done, if I compare to what life was in the 90s to where we are today, I think by and large, generally, people have benefited from technology. I think it has uplifted all of us. I think you also kind of mentioned that. Now, okay, so here we are seeing perhaps a little bit of a step function leap, right? There's a compounded effect maybe we are seeing uh, with this chat GPT. At least the historical data tells us that an ecosystem typically follows that tends to, yes, we set the equilibrium, but generally moves things forward positively uh, in driving overall economics and the standard of living. So I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what that would look like, chat GPT post. I think if I had that crystal ball, I think that'd be worth something. <laughs> but I think you may have already uh, alluded to something like that. So you all, you just mentioned that, okay, I foresee a, an app store emerging on the backs of that. Well, there you go. Okay. If there's an app store emerging on the backs of that, then shouldn't we please for a second pause and say, well, you know, App Store emerged on the backs of Apple, and that drew uh, basically created a whole economy in, its, in of itself. It gave a lot of people new jobs and things like that. So that is where I hold on to my optimistic lens. Okay. Now, if it happens to be such a compounding effect as we're seeing that there could be, right, where it, it skips a few steps on the ladder, then there may be a bigger turmoil for that interim period before we settle into that equilibrium. And yes, that could be somewhat challenging. That is exactly my thought. We've always done this, horses, industrial revolutions, all of that, but it was stretched out, right? Now, I believe it could decimate industries overnight or in a quarter. And yes, I 100% agree with you. And I'm a very optimistic person on this. I think ultimately we, this all ends up really well, right? But I'm curious and I'm going to ask some more people from maybe like government or policy, somebody that specializes in this, is what do we do when it happens so frequently, so fast that the unemployment happens and is so high because we're waiting for the, or unless if there's some principle where the ecosystem follows the innovation at the same rate of speed that the innovation occurs. Maybe that's something. I don't, I don't know if that's true. We have talked about it sort of in the abstract so far, right? I think as you mentioned, you know, that was sort of Elon Musk talking about, you know, what, five years, six years ago, he said, you know, it could be dangerous. Uh, there should be some guardrails. I think we're getting to that juncture. So yes, I think Chad GPT, uh, if you are, you know, if you were that one person, uh, you know, as you said, if any one of these companies that used to kind of do this, curate this manually, yes, there's an immediate threat and impact. And because it could be on a large scale, then I think somebody will have to think about some guardrails. But that's kind of where the debate, I think, gets even further interesting because, you know, guardrails are really the antithesis of innovation, right? And one of the reasons why Bay Area, generally speaking, you know, United States and Bay Area in particular, or innovation has thrived is because those guardrails were not there and it let people kind of be creative and dream of things and, and go and chase those and not everything was successful. But I think 
in, in, in large part because that autonomy existed. I think that is a big question. I'm personally of the belief that, you know, free enterprise is the way to go. I think if you bring in government too soon, uh, you can put in basically breaks or just something because, you know, just kind of the fun goes away, right? But there's a moral aspect to this is what you're calling out. And I think uh, we are going to find ourselves again in some uncharted territory where, yes, I mean, if you ask the person who's going to be impacted, I mean, we're talking livelihood, right? And uh, I think from a moral lens, it makes sense to, you know, put some guardrails and cannot happen too soon because that would just cause a, a, a level of unrest that, you know, we have to maintain a certain kind of a peace and quiet and, and decorum that cannot be challenged on the back. So no matter what kind of a martial productivity we can get. Mm-hmm.